nice. <laughs> With swords having been used for thousands of years as some of the most deadly weapons available, there are many beautiful, intricate types that are made in Forged and Fire. The show has already had seven seasons in the past five years, and with this comes an increase in creativity, skill, and design. With the show pulling in more and more skilled swordsmiths from all over the country, there have been many various foragers with their own quirks and specialties. In this video, we will display the top 10 Forged and Fire tests that blew viewers out of their seats. So make sure to leave a like, hit subscribe, and see if you agree with what we put at number one. The Grim Reaper uses the scythe to harvest the souls of humans when it's their time. The test of number 10, Brandon's Grim Reaper Scythe. In a special themed episode, the top two contestants were tasked with recreating a bubonic era tool turned weapon, the Grim Reaper Scythe. While the scythe was originally meant to be used as a farm instrument to reap large amounts of crops, it's fitting that it soon became synonymous with death, since he is the Reaper of Souls. Rebellious peasants commonly used their scythes as deadly weapons, leading to the pop culture adaptation of the farm tool as a murder machine. The contestants had to forge a scythe with a 24 to 26 inch blade, a shaft of 70 to 73 inches, and two handles. Contestant Brandon Scythe stood out for its incredible strength and craftsmanship. He constructed his blade out of premium 1080 steel, made the shaft out of a spiral-shaped maple wood, and constructed his handles with mortise and tenon joints to make them quote-unquote strong as hell. Ultimately, his dedication to strength paid off as he walked away $10,000 richer. Congratulations, you are the Forged and Fire champion. Good job, brother. Thank you so much. Number 9. Mace's Moro Chris. The Moro Chris is a formidable weapon designed primarily for slicing and chopping. The ancient double edged sword originated in East Java, but was and continues to be widely used throughout Southeast Asia. The blade is wavy, meant to create a wider wound during combat in order to cause the victim to quickly bleed to death. In one episode, contestants Mace and Murray were tasked with making their own versions of the Moro Chris, with Mace creating an astonishingly beautiful weapon inspired by the spirit of the tiger. He added stripes and a tiger tooth, filed handsome edges on his blade, created a stunning handle, and forged his Moro Chris entirely by hand. He developed the beautiful blade design using 23 layers of steel, all forged by hand. Mesa's magnificent blade ultimately won this episode of the competition. Number 8. David's Qatar. David Goldberg, a full-time bladesmith with 20 years of experience, won this challenge. He drew on his extensive training and knowledge of Japanese philosophy to create a beautiful two-bladed push dagger known as the Qatar. Throughout the challenge, David used his ability to focus on the task at hand, and was complimented on his practice of putting forth the best effort to result in the highest achievement possible. David's weapon featured a beautiful blade with swirls in the metal and a handsome hilt. It cut cleanly through two pieces of metal and successfully passed every test required as the judges used it to disembowel and officially execute the required kill cuts, proving that this is one beautiful but deadly weapon. Number 7. Reuse Viking Battle Axe. In Season 1, Episode 3, the final two challengers were asked to make an additional Viking Battle Axe. Originating from Scandinavia, the Battle Axe was often made with a lot of bulky multi layered steel, helping to make it sturdy. Ultimately, it was Ryu Lim who rose to the top of the challengers with his version of the Viking Battle Axe. His win was all the more surprising because Ryu's home forge was made almost entirely of makeshift tools and equipment he made himself. In fact, one piece of equipment required cooling with a hair dryer which Ryu held by hand. Ryu's spirit of stubborn determination to craft the best possible weapon, regardless of the difficulty, led him to create one fierce weapon, capable of splitting skulls despite admittedly not being the nicest looking. This, I believe, is a killer. Good job. Thank you very much. Number 6. Peter's Crusader Sword This episode featured Peter Swartzbert and David Roeder in the final combat. They were tasked with forging a crusader sword, typical of the Middle Ages, and intended primarily for use from horseback. The sword has a very long, 28 to 31 inch blade with double edges and a hilt. Peter, with 22 years of experience and a full-time blacksmith, forged a heavy sword which easily passed Marchida's kill test. Dave forged 5160 steel and created a walnut handle with deerskin hide. Marchida described it as having beautiful thrusting capability. The two blades were tested by a rider on horseback with the horse at full gallop. A ballistic dummy clothed in medieval garb and cloth armor was the target for both swords, which ultimately proved that they were both sharp for thrusting and cutting. Both weapons were tested for strength in a mechanical device. Ultimately, Peter's sword won the competition due to its superior performance and artistic construction. The cuts are lacerating almost in half. Without a doubt, your weapon will kill. Awesome.
Number 5. Jamie's Roman Gladius The Roman Gladius was the primary weapon of the Roman Legionnaire. For more than 1,000 years, it was the weapon which dominated on Roman battlefields. The two finalists, Jamie Lundahl and Mareko Mamasi, were charged with creating their own version of the blade. Jamie, a full-time bladesmith with 15 years of experience, set out to produce the most beautiful blade possible, featuring Damascus steel. He hand-carved the hilt and engraved it with the words, Fortune favors the bold, in Latin. He used olive wood as part of the handle component components, which added a historically authentic quality to the sword. Mareko, a full-time bladesmith with five years' experience, created a stunning sword with strong lines and a sturdy, geometric handle. He incorporated 675 layers of steel during the forging process. Both forged weapons were tested on ballistic dummies dressed in Roman gladiator garb and helmets. Both weapons passed the cut and kill tests, but ultimately, Jamie's weapon proved to be the better of the two, and he won the competition. David Baker even told Jamie that his Roman gladius was one of the most most beautifully forged he had ever seen. Number 4, John Spardiche. What I'm really hoping for is Doug's going to say, it will keep. In what was described by host Will Wills as one of the most difficult challenges on Forged in Fire, the contestants were tasked to make an Eastern European bardiche. The bardiche features a large, crescent-shaped axe head that measures nearly two feet and was perforated with small holes, making it lighter and easier to cleave through flesh and blood. It was a multi-purpose weapon, as infantry soldiers would balance their muskets on the bardiche's pole when firing from a distance, and then use the axe during melee combat. That. Contestant John forged his blade out of 5160, featuring a hickory handle and brass pins. He added a touch of beauty to his blade by hand drawing a dragon design, turning his weapon into one big piece of art as well. This weapon embodied the saying, beautiful but deadly, since it easily cut through a pig carcass, prompting Doug Markaita's iconic saying, it will kill. Overall, sir, your bardiche will kill. Number 3. Washington's Kalashmar The Kalashmar, a popular dueling sword, became an iconic presidential weapon thanks to its role as George Washington's favorite, and it's not hard to see why. The Kalashmar featured a unique trifoil blade design that tapers to a precise point, allowing for thrusting and stabbing in attacks. The extremely broad fort gives the blade ample strength, all while featuring intricate and beautiful elements, such as a perforated and decorated oval guard and pommel. Contestant Josh forged his Kalashmar out of 5160 and mild steel, while also improvising a rifle barrel for the pommel. Josh managed to maintain the beauty and intricacy of the Kalashmard, all while also ensuring that his blade was sharp enough to kill, resulting in a weapon that even George Washington would be proud of. Number 2. Ted's Tabar With origins from Persia, India, and Armenia, the Tabar is a traditional battle axe entirely made out of steel. While an all-steel weapon can definitely be an advantage on the battlefield, it caused some construction challenges for the forgers. Ultimately, winner Ted Thompson was able to make an axe head out of an 8-pound sledgehammer head, admitting that he wanted to chop a car in half with his Tabar. During the strength test, his Tabar left a strong crease in a shield, yet the axe maintained its straightness, showcasing the advantages of an all-steel construction of the Tabar. Number 1. Eric and Jared's Hungamunga Eric, Jared, congratulations. Your weapons were strong enough to propel you into this final round. One of the strangest shaped weapons on the show, the Hungamunga is a hybrid between a sword, boomerang, chakram, and battle axe that originated in Central Africa. According to the two finalists, Jared Williams and Eric Leong, the Hungamunga was challenging to make due to its unique shape and needing four points instead of one. The special crescent tip helps to hook and gut whatever the target is, certifying that this is one weapon that will kill. Thank you everyone for tuning in to Film Trip. Don't forget to leave a like, press subscribe, and comment below if you agree or disagree with our list. Bye for now.